What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. So, two weeks ago today, Apple released iOS 17.5 Beta 1, and now they are back with the second beta for 17.5. In addition to this, they released their traditional slew of other beta releases, but for this video, I do want to talk about 17.5, and then make sure to follow the channel because we will be dropping watchOS 10.5 Beta 2 as well. Having said that, 17.5 Beta 1 did have some new features, mainly small tweaks, unless you were in the EU, where you can download apps straight from the websites and all that instead of the App Store, but we'll touch on that in a second. But high level, for the most part, 17.5 does not seem to have a ton of new features per se. Not surprising as we are deep into iOS 17 at this point, and we will be seeing, if you can believe it, iOS 18 here in just a couple of months. So I'm sure a lot of those new features will be saved for iOS 18. Having said that, let's go ahead, jump into this, recap beta one and see if we can find anything new in beta two. Let's go. Okay, so as you guys can see, 17.5 beta two just finished installing. Let's go ahead and do a heat check to see how it's operating. Again, for those of you new to the channel, we like to do this just to show really how bad the heat management is, unfortunately, on iPhones, as opposed to other Android phones that we update. Um, it's a well-known issue that the iPhone's heat management is pretty terrible, and especially during updates, especially on the top of the device, it usually is significantly hotter. Uh, there you go. Usually, it's not uncommon to also see over 107 to 110 degrees, so... Yeah, still warm, unfortunately. They haven't tweaked that in the actual update cycle, unfortunately, so keep that in mind. Now, beyond that, let me go ahead and actually get into the device, and we can go ahead and talk about what's new and what we can see right off the bat. So, since this is not a complete fresh deployment and install, as you guys can see here, this build came in at 565.8 megabytes, which is not massive compared to the six gigs that the original beta dropped at. This is obviously due to that being a complete new install coming from a public release to a beta, or if you're going from a beta release to a public release, that is not uncommon. Jumping into settings, general, about, let's take a look at this build number. And as you can see here, this is now gonna be 21F5058E. The E again signifying that we're still a few builds away from this going public. Uh, there's still some tweaks in the background and from what we've seen from beta one, that is good to see. Also, if you missed that beta one video, again, like we said in the intro, beta one really had some new additions to the EU and what iOS did for them, specifically surrounding um, web apps and being able to download apps directly from the web rather than an app store. There was an update also that we didn't show in regards to the books app where it now gives you somewhat of a goal if you have set for reading goals and you can obviously set this as you need but that is added to the home page as you saw right on the top there again nothing new in beta 2 still from beta 1 also the podcast app had the color change depending on the album art the cover artwork so again not new there but that did exist Going back into settings and actually taking a look at battery, you guys probably saw that there was an issue with the charging optimization aspect and how it read from the codes. As we can see here, that has since been fixed. It is now showing like it traditionally should and has done in the past. Since we're talking about this, battery health, again, I do like calling this out now, especially every update. As you can see, we are luckily still at 100% battery health after 225 charging cycles. That is a significant improvement from the iPhone 14 Pro that we had prior and Pro Max, so definitely good to see. Beta 1 was actually pretty solid as it was also, not too many glitches. Everything did operate as you would anticipate pretty smoothly, and that seems to have carried over here. The other big piece is obviously battery life. Beta 1 was actually not bad. It probably had some of the best battery life we had in a recent beta build. So again, that was very good to see also. Now, one other thing I do want to point out in the Clocks app, if you actually were to go into Stopwatch, we've been talking about this for a number of builds now since it was taken out of one of the other betas, but there used to be a live activity 
and it is still not coming back in any of these builds, unfortunately. Not sure why they decided to remove that. It seems like a standard feature that should have been present, but clearly that is still not, unfortunately, active in Beta 2. Jumping around into the actual settings and all that, you can see launching the camera, no new splash screens really anywhere from there. Let's go into music really quick. So again, yeah, nothing new is really coming up in that regard. We will continue to do a deep dive and see what is going on um, further in the next couple of days into the next week. But let's lastly check the feedback app and see if this has actually been updated because unfortunately it was taking a while from beta one. And as you can see, beta one is still the only one here. The last update was on the third. It is the 16th today. So we'll keep an eye out to see what else we find, anything new. But for now, again, pretty basic update. Again, US users, not too much to be seen. Small little UI tweaks. Again, we are so close to iOS 18 coming out. Shouldn't be a surprise that there's not much to it, but let me know in the comments down below what is the next big feature set you're hoping to see. Is it an improved Siri or is it something else? Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.